Hi families, welcome to another installment of SAISD Virtual Q&A. I'm Patty Salzman, Chief Academic Officer, and today I have with me Gerard Cortez, Assistant Superintendent for Disability Services. He's here today to answer some questions specifically about special education. Gerard? How are you doing today, Patty? Great. Well, some of the questions that come to us quite often is, one question in particular is, how are we providing services for students for whom a virtual learning platform is not necessarily appropriate? And so we are doing several different things, but we first and foremost provided instructional materials and activities that were delivered to students' homes. Uh, and then we also pro provide additional coaching um, either by phone or we also do that online. We have some teletherapy models that we're utilizing for related services. We're doing a lot. We basically are utilizing a blended model of online instruction coupled with materials that were provided in advance to students. That's great. And are the majority of students with disabilities receiving instruction and services, um, including those with spe specific and special needs like speech? Yeah, primarily instruction is being provided in a virtual platform through a combination of direct online instruction and offline activities. Uh, we have teachers and instructional assistants that are available for further individualized assistance as needed by students in order to make sure that they're accessing the general education curriculum. Uh, related services such as speech is often provided in a teletherapy uh, format and we also are providing teletherapy by way of counseling and other related services such as occupational therapy. Great. Frequently asked question from our families is, what about behavioral supports being provided to students? That is a great question. All of the students that had a behavioral support um, system in place prior to COVID-19 are continuing to receive that support either online. We're also doing it by telephone. Uh, we're fortunate enough to have behavioral specialists that continue to consult with teachers virtually to provide those strategies with working with students who have some behavioral challenges. Some, some of our students uh, receive specialized services directly from the teacher or instructional assistant, and sometimes that's done virtually or by phone. It just depends on what the student's needs are and whether or not they have access to online. We are also utilizing a social emotional uh, learning curriculum that we're able to uh, deploy daily. Through our behavior specialists, they're able to provide access to the SEL platform uh, to students who may have some struggles with regard to behavior. Great. One of the questions that our families have is, uh, we've made this transition from classrooms uh, that are face-to-face -to, -face to those that are online. And so one of the questions that our families frequently ask is, what does the support look like for teachers um, to make this transition to an online environment for what our special education students? Well, what we're trying to do is make sure that our teachers have immediate access to uh, support personnel from the central office the same access that they would have in a routine classroom environment. We have instructional specialists, we have program coordinators, we also have directors who provide support through weekly meetings. They're interfacing with the teachers, providing that additional support and coaching. Sometimes that's done virtually. Um, we utilize the Zoom platform often to conduct those weekly meetings. But we have check-ins. The teachers are able to reach the directors, coordinators, specialists, our lead personnel at any time, they can contact them uh, via telephone, of course text messages, but we do have weekly planned meetings where they're able to interface with the staff on a regular basis. Great. And we have been in school now since uh, Monday, March the 30th. Can you tell me a little bit about how students are responding uh, to the virtual or distance learning environment? All reports that we received indicate that teachers are responding very favorably to the new platform. For one reason, it creates some new opportunities that we probably did not explore prior to this situation, and it's allowing us to kind of see how we can better engage students. Uh, but for the most part, we've had um, 
wonderful reception. We even had teachers that are utilizing <laughs> their pets with regard to some of the online instruction, introducing students to that. Uh, we often find that when teachers are in their natural environment, sometimes at home, it creates a natural segue to some other learning opportunities that they may not have had the opportunity to utilize in the traditional classroom setting. So I would say for the most part, teachers are really enjoying this opportunity to provide some additional instructional activities that normally would not occur in that traditional classroom environment. I like to uh, think of it in terms of extension activities. And so teachers are able to deploy those extension activities and check for understanding in another way. And so I think for the most part, the teachers have really enjoyed this. And I think we've also had some people that have indicated that maybe this is something that we should do a little more often, uh, especially with regard to providing the coaching, the virtual coaching. Mm -hmm. Great, well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And we've learned a whole lot as we've transitioned to this new learning platform and this new environment. One of the things that we've learned is our teachers are really embracing it and our kids are really loving it. So we thank you for joining us at uh, this SAISD virtual Q&A and we invite you to our next installment where we talk a little more about how we support our students in our dual language program. Thank you.